The first images from a new observatory have been released and astronomers say that unlike anything they've seen before, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory is in Chile and uses the world's largest digital camera. John T. Horner is an astrobiologist and astronomer from the University of Southern Queensland and joins us now. Great to see you, John T. Oh, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So can you tell us about these images from the observatory? What do they show? Well, they're just breathtaking. They're really showing what this incredible new technology, this incredible new telescope is capable of. It's essentially what you would see if you could take the pinhole that is a pupil of your eye and make it eight and a half metres across and yet keep your field of view big enough to fit the moon 81 times across. Just this incredible wealth of beauty in the cosmos. You've got photos of a galaxy cluster where if you zoom in on this image and you can on the Vera Rubin website, you zoom to a point where the only things you can see the distant specks of galaxies. It is astonishing the level of detail it's picked up. It's just so beautiful. See here galaxies interacting with each other, more galaxies in this image than stars by an order of magnitude or more. It's just so spectacular. You said... And this um, is really just a first. Fantastic. You said, Jonty, that uh, for the solar system, this is almost like humanity opening its eyes for the first time. That's an incredible statement. That's what you think. Oh, it's astonishing. I mean, to put it in perspective, the first 10 hours of data that they took with this telescope led them to discover more than 2,000 new objects in the solar system. In the whole of the last 12 months, we only discovered 20,000 new objects. So in 10 hours, we've achieved 10% of what we did last year. What that means is that in the coming years, the number of objects we know in the solar system will grow by more than an order of magnitude. And that means we'll be able to get brand new clues, brand new evidence that allows us to unpick the history of our planetary system, how the planets formed, how they moved. Answering questions like, is there really planet nine out there? Where did the water on the Earth come from? How much risk are we at from asteroids whizzing past our planets like bullets from the black? It's going to answer all this and more. It's just going to be astonishing. We'll be talking about it for decades to come. Right. So what is it about this uh, observatory, Jonty, that means it can produce such great images? It's that incredible combination of this wonderful new camera and a telescope that has a huge mirror, but is the equivalent of an incredibly fast lens you put on your camera, which means it has a very wide field of view. So normally with a telescope with a big mirror, it gathers a lot of light, but it looks at a tiny, tiny, tiny patch of sky. This telescope looks at a huge area of the sky with every image. It takes a photo every 15 seconds and that 15 second image will show you objects a million times fainter than you can see with the naked eye, which will let Vera Rubin scan the entire night sky every single week, making 20 terabytes of data per night. And it's that incredible repeat observation of the sky that's going to be so useful for the solar system, because if there's anything moving, Vera Rubin will find it. I can I ask you a basic question, uh, John, to the photographs that have been seeing have got wonderful colours in them. Are those colours added after the photographs come out or are they the actual colours the, as the telescope is seeing them? That's the actual colours that you would see taking photos with different colours and adding them together. So it's an approximation of what you'd see with the unaided eye if you could get enough light to see in colour. So they're an attempt at giving you true colour. But there's always a bit of artistic license with any kind of image like this that you're seeing in terms of how the colours are balanced. Just because of taking digital data from a telescope and trying to match how the eye would see that if you could get enough light. But that is really as close to true colour as you can get. Wonderful. John T. Horner, good to talk to you. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me.